Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Greaves Cotton Limited's Q2 FI22 Earnings Conference Call. From the management, we have with us Nagesh Basavanhali, Group CEO and MD, and Dalpat Jain, Group CFO. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Nagesh Basavanhali, Group CEO and MD of Greece Cotton Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, I hope everybody is doing well, staying safe. I welcome to you all to the Greaves Cotton Q2 FI22 earnings call. Let me begin by giving you a little bit of an overview on the business, and Mr. Jane, our CFO, will take you through the financials. As uh, some of you recall, we started on a diversification journey from a single customer, single fuel, single industry four years ago. So where are we today? Our diversification strategy has positively paid off. There is a consolidated revenue growth of 13%. Uh, getting into the key highlights, new business continues to accelerate. New business now accounts for 40% plus, 40% plus contribution in terms of the overall business. As you may recall, in the last uh, uh, quarterly call, we had talked about the restructuring of the group into Greaves Engines, Greaves Electric Mobility, Greaves Retail, three primary business and uh, two small enabler business. But when we, so let's talk about the three primary businesses. Greaves Electric Mobility records a 85% increase in volume, 111% revenue growth in Q2 FY22 versus the previous year. Uh, in terms of the Greaves Retail Auto EV Mart, which is one of the earliest multi-brand EV players in the country, was launched this past quarter, and it's receiving very good inputs. Restructuring and consolidation efficiencies, uh, which we've been working on for the last four quarters, are expected to result in an annualized fixed cost reduction and uh, Dalpat will talk about that. With new products, financing, and higher demand coming from growing network, uh, Ampere uh, and Greaves Electric Mobility, and in Greaves Electric Mobility today we have Ampere, which is two-wheeler, E-Rickshaw, e, e brand, and we have the MLR. And um, in the case of uh, October, we are seeing good traction as well, in addition to the best ever quarter, the previous quarter. Um, we've also invested more than 300 crores into the Greaves Electric Mobility oh. business. So, and we will continue to keep looking at forward-looking businesses and how to drive future growth. E then when we look at it in terms of three wheelers, this past quarter, we have completed the acquisition of MLR Auto, <clears throat> which gives us access to L5 cargo and passenger three wheeler, Ely e rickshaw With this, we have strengthened our position to become one of the largest players now catering to roughly 85% of the last mile mobility segment. We will continue to mobilize India, generate gainful employment for lower end of the pyramid, especially with our E3 wheeler users, as well as contribute towards building the nation responsibly. Greaves electric mobility now accounts for 25% of the overall revenue. Auto engines or auto engine segment has had short term challenges uh, post COVID one and two, and that we are watching that segment very carefully for a recovery going forward. We are happy to also state that the other businesses, non-auto engines business as well as Greaves retail businesses have seen growth. 
in the past quarter, we have also launched a high-speed E2-wheeler Magnus Ampere from the Ampere portfolio, which is the Magnus EX with a 100 plus kilometer range and which is a comfortable family scooter. With this extended range and now Ampere being available in diverse segments, both in the B2B and B2C sites, we have a good coverage now. This along with other ecosystem force multipliers, whether it is pairs or service or financing, we believe um, uh, this augurs well for the Greaves electric mobility. We had also talked about Ranipet factory, <clears throat> which is our mega site, and that's coming out well. And we believe uh, by, uh, it is slightly ahead of schedule, and we believe this will help us scale volumes and make Greaves electric mobility where we really need to go. Commercial production in this case will follow um, uh, shortly. Uh, we've also talked about the auto EV mart and the strategy to electrify India and get into multi-brand retail. With this, let me hand it over to Mr. Dalpat Jain, our CFO, to go over the financials. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nagesh. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. As Nagesh has described, the company is going through a transformation where we are saying we are seeing our core business having an impact on its revenue, but other businesses are fueling the growth. So in the quarter, we had a consolidated revenue of 374 crores, which is a 31% growth over last year, same quarter, and 63% growth compared to preceding quarter, that is Q1 of FI22. Out of the four business units that we have, the three that was non-auto, the retail solutions, and e-mobility reported healthy growth year on year. E-mobility grew by 111%. Retail solutions had a 27% growth, and non-auto had a 33% revenue growth. Auto engines continue to have the impact of surplus inventory, which was there at the OEM end, and the impact of post-COVID impact on shared mobility. So there we had a degrowth of 57%. <clears throat> Our focus on working capital and cash management helped in generating a 35 crore of free cash flow during the quarter. We ended the quarter with 265 crore of cash and cash equivalent. In terms of share of e-mobility, now it's almost 24 to 25% of the company's revenue and its volume as well as revenue are growing month over month as we progress. The demand is quite high in this particular space. The restructuring exercise company had undertaken over last three years has started yielding results on the cost base. Compared to FY20's cost, the overall annualized fixed cost has reduced by 45 crores, and that is getting reflected in the P&L. So break-even points for the engine business has come down with that. Companies focus on the new businesses, particularly in the e-mobility space, will continue. The investments that we have made so far, as Nagesh mentioned, are 300 crores, and companies committed to further invest as we go forward. The couple of developments post quarter end, companies subscribe to 26% equity in MLR Auto, and with that we have got the presence in uh, L5 segment. And company also completed the acquisition of remaining 26% stake in Bestway, which has presence in a rickshaw under LE brand. So with that, we have a further strengthened our e-mobility portfolio. With this, I'll open the floor for questions, and uh, both Nagesh and I will be happy to take up any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue is assembled. The first question is from the line of Ashutosh Tiwari from Equalist Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, so firstly, uh, <coughs> on the electric mobility side, two-wheeler side, the uh, volume is around 10,000 for the quarter. Uh, 
uh, what would you share of the high speed? Because if I look at the Wahan data, the volumes uh, are not uh, much. So, is the mix more tilted towards low speed in this quarter? So, Ashutosh, two factors. <clears throat> the Wahan data speaks about the retail uh, uh, sale. And in the quarter one, as we had seen because of uh, COVID led shutdown, the primary uh, sale could not happen. And that led to a shortage of high speed at the secondary end. In the quarter, the high speed had almost 30% uh, share of the total volume. And we are picking up further on the high speed production. So that share will increase as we move forward in the third and fourth quarter. So that these are the factors between the volume that we have in our presentation versus the one data. Okay. So, uh, so uh, incrementally, uh, the share of this high speed will further increase on October and all, October and all. Is that correct assessment? That's correct. That's correct. So month on month between July, August, September, this has increased. The average is 30% that I spoke about. And as we move forward, it is further increasing with the focus on the high speed production and localization major part having completed now our supply chain support partners are also getting stable. Okay. And which parts are mainly facing issue in terms of shortage? Those are chip led uh, uh, parts. So particularly cluster, so some of the specific components, it, month over, uh, there, there, there was a problem in the past quarter. Uh, Nagesh, you want to add? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I think uh, big picture, uh, high speed is going to increase. I think the trend we are seeing month on month, like Dalpat said, October, where we've already recorded, I think it's in the deck, recorded over 5,000 plus sales. Uh, high speed is a much higher percentage than we have seen in the past. And localization, a lot of the hard work is done uh, with uh, our partners here. Uh, supply chain remains a concern globally for a, a lot of the industry, not just us. And we are dealing with uh, people, either the chips, the ECUs, basically a uh, lot of the components that uh, we can imp uh, work with uh, tier two, tier three. So we are doing what we can to look at the needs, not just for one month, but also for the next 12 months, and how do we manage that. So our supply chain, team, chain teams are very active. We are definitely a very high percentage of localization, but some of our tier ones have supplies coming from outside and in some of this uh, constrained environment, so we are managing that. That, I, that is one risk we are managing right now. But demand continues to be very high, both for high speed and low speed, and it's very evident with the, what we are seeing on the field. So Nagesh, you mentioned that in October and all that high speed version has gone up a lot. So is it like now more than 40-50% of sales is coming from there, the volume basically? Yeah, so it's early days. As you can imagine, it's not even, it's still 26. Yes, the trend is there. Uh, the good news is Magnus has been received very well. There is a wait list for Magnus. And now with the addition of Magnus EX, we have a longer wait list. So the demand is much higher. And yes, high speed demand is there, is, uh, and it will continue to increase. I don't want to give a percentage right now, but in the next couple of days, once we close the month, we'll know. But yes, it is definitely increasing, and you should see that trend. And uh, lastly, before I join with you again, uh, the losses in the electric mobility has widened. So uh, uh, one thing is that uh, that uh, option, that uh, stake increase in this, this, this option. So, but if, even if you exclude that 7.7 .7 crores, uh, and first is that where is that recorded, that cost item, and even if you remove that, then also there is a loss of, say, uh, 12, 13 crores. So, how do we look at the, the losses in this business going ahead? Yeah. So, two factors in Q2 in terms of the immobility losses. One, the uh, option value where the final transaction is completed now the differential of the valuation has got accounted in the other expenses. And that's the impact of around 8.5 crore, including the expenses which are incurred related to that transaction. Okay. So that once we exclude that, there is a loss. And that loss is because of the interest, the investment which has gone in the people, the structure which to have the higher revenue because quarter on quarter, the, uh, the traction is very high. And we have readied our infrastructure, the people and marketing expense to lead to that higher revenue growth. And the third factor is the common price increases and impact on the RMC. So the gross margin 
have been lesser than what we had in the same quarter of the last year. So 2% impact has been because of this commodity price increase, which will neutralize as we go in the coming quarter. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashwin Agarwal from Akash Kangai. Hello. Hi, Ashwin. Yeah, uh, sir, uh, I just wanted to get a confirmation about the uh, segmentation. Can you just give us the uh, wide area of scope about the tier 1 uh, volumes and tier 2, tier 3 volumes about the mobility? Uh, Ashwin, we don't give the breakup, but uh, we have given the segment level volumes in our investor presentation. What is the total two-wheeler volume, three-wheeler volume? So two-wheelers was at around 10,000 plus in the quarter. We have equally spread out network across India and our distribution between tier one, tier two, tier three is fairly equi-split. Uh, uh, so I would say between passenger and cargo, we have 55, 40, uh, but that is for three-wheeler between 55, 45. And rural versus urban is 70, 30. So 70% of the revenue or sales is in the tier two and tier three, 30% is in the tier one. Okay, thank you. And my second question is, uh, like, is our nearby competitor has been uh, spending a lot of a cash burn to uh, uh, regenerate this type of this market growing on. So, have we have we are been planning for the any cash burn or uh, raise of any debt fund? So, Ashwin, uh, as you know, we have a, uh, enough cash flow and a strong balance sheet. Whatever is required for the business, we are going to have the uh, needful resources, but at the same time, Greaves has always been very focused on the right profitability and the cash flow. So we are not going to have a cash burn for the sake of it. We are going to invest behind marketing people to have a long-term growth, but at the same time focusing on the profitability as early as possible. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. question is from the line of Vimal Goel from Union Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, uh, Dalpat, the first question is to you. Uh, if you just, I couldn't find out our regular uh, disclosure on the segment uh, uh, revenue breakup. So, uh, if you could just help me, what would be the contribution from engines, aftermarket, e-mobility, and others? Sure. It's there in our investor presentation, Vimal. But uh, in the quarter, the e-mobility had a total revenue of 90 crores out of 374. The okay. retail solutions uh, had a 88 crore of quarterly revenue and balance was from the grease engines. Okay. And aftermarket? That's our retail solution. Aftermarket plus GCGR. So that's the retail solution which was 88 crores in the quarter. Okay. Engines you said was 90, right? E-mobility 90. And balance out of 374 is the engines. So 180 between these two segments and remaining uh, 190 crores in the engines. Right. Okay. Uh, uh, the second question is uh, on on the uh, uh, on the high speed segment. You said that this quarter it was 30 percent. What was the number That's for Q1, Q1 FY21 and Q uh, 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 sorry Q2 FY21 and Q1 FY22 last quarter and last year. So Q2 FY22, as you know, the high speed was very low. I don't remember, but uh, till H1 of last year, we were at close to 15-20% in high speed. Q4 last financial year, we were at 40%. Q1 this year was impacted by COVID. So from primary sale perspective, there was nothing. And that COVID impact also had impact on our local supply chain. And that is where local supply base got impacted with the uh, one overall uh, supply issues, which are there led by the global chip issues. And that is where the share of uh, high speed in quarter two at, was at 30%. But like Nagesh mentioned, with the increased focus on the high speed, we are seeing month on month growth and higher manufacturing of the high speed vehicles. So basically, if I were to look at the trend in first half of 21, you were at 1520, you reached 40. Uh, for Q1, you were, the, the, it was negligible. For Q2, right. it was at 30, and now you expect it to go to whatever, 50, 50, whatever. Increase from here on. Yeah. yeah. And just to add to that, just for uh, memory refresh sake, Q1, because of Coimbatore having a very bad uh, COVID influx, our plants were down for eight weeks. Eight out of the 12 weeks, we were down. 
right? So Q1 in that sense was an aberration, but yes, the overall trend that you touched upon is correct. Okay. Uh, so if I were to look at the wholesale market share, okay, uh, total market share electric vehicles, uh, if you could just give me some numbers on Q2 or, uh, you know, H2 of FI22. Uh, so Vimal, uh, this, is our, this is our, uh, the public data on Vaha and Fada and uh, some of the internal data that we have. Our total share in Q2 was at around 15% in two wheelers, including both high speed and slow speed. 15%. Yes. Got it, got it, and okay, okay. So it is pretty much in line with what you had done in FI21, the full year of FI21. So you have maintained your market share. That's correct. In Q2, we are back to the similar level with both segments together. Okay, fair enough. And sir, uh, last question was on Gentex. Uh, so this, uh, uh, you know, uh, Government of India's uh, uh, paper on you know reducing your uh, uh, you know emissions because uh, due to your Gentex. Uh, so what is our recourse for this? Uh, uh, how do we sort of get impacted uh, because of this uh, uh, numbers? Because uh, Gensets, I believe, is a is, is a good contributor and it has been growing well. Uh, so uh, you know, how do we? Uh, what are uh, what are our plans? Uh, so some of our larger competitors have announced that they will be looking at uh, Gensets which are made for uh, from renewable energy, etc. So uh, what is what are what are our plans going forward? Project. Yeah, so about four years ago when we started the diversification, right, we said we will go to a fuel agnostic approach. Obviously, in auto engines, you're seeing that. In non-auto, also, it will follow. And clearly, we are well aware, and like you're saying, I think we have seen a good uptick on genset sales, especially in the last couple of quarters with hospitals and this. And we will continue to evolve that technology. Uh, as we go forward, we clearly are committed. We are working on the CPC before. In fact, we will be ready ahead of time. And uh, the technology and the fuel type also, we will uh, we will keep we will continue to work, and uh, we will deal with any uh, uh, regulations that may come up. Uh, so you, what you're saying is uh, basically you'll be in line with your lower emissions. Uh, uh, the technology that will come up will probably not be impact. Uh, will not get. Uh, this particular business will not get as impacted uh, uh, going forward because of the. We'll continue to. Yeah, we'll continue to keep investing in uh, newer technologies like we have done on the auto side. That's that's the point. Yeah. Right. Sir, and uh, uh, if I could push in one more, uh, sir, in H1 of FI22, what was the capex uh, that went into Rani Pay? <laughs> Uh, so Rani Pet total capex uh, so far we have spent is around eight crores of rupees. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is the total capex in Rani Pet. The actual spend that I'm talking about. Okay. The actual cash flow. And, and, uh, and by the end of the year, how much do we uh, how much do we expect to spend here? Uh, we must. I'm not in a position to answer this right now. As you know, we don't give the forward forward guidance. Overall capex plan for the business, as we have told earlier, also total investment in the business, we are going to have upwards of 700 crore. 300 crore, we have all, more than 300 crore, we have already invested in the business so far. Right, but at 700 crore was anyway. That was 10 years, but yeah, anyway. Over a period of 10 years, out of which 300 yeah. crores have got invested, and a lot of it will be front-ended as we had spoken earlier. Fair. Fair. Thank you so much. All the best. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashutosh Tiwari from Equity Securities. Please go through. Before that, I would like to remind participants to please limit your question to two per participants only. Yeah, hi, sir. <clears throat> so on this uh, non-auto engine uh, volumes, I think uh, there is a fire white. Uh, <clears throat> is it a COVID impact or are you seeing that some stagnation is coming through in this segment? And how should we look at going ahead? Going ahead? Uh, two parts, Genset uh, has seen a very healthy growth and because of that overall uh, pricing mix of the uh, business, you would have seen the volume versus revenue growth is far higher in the non-auto. In the other segment, which is in the farm equipment and maize, there was a one-time impact last year because of the lockdown in the first quarter, there was a pent-up demand which led to a higher volume in the month of July and August. In the current year, the, uh, though the lockdown was there, but at the same time, there were, as you know, the quarter one numbers were much better in the non-auto. So volume overall for non-auto, uh, we should look at from the half year perspective. And we expect uh, the volumes to go up. Second issue was on the farm equipment, where 
some of the products were imported and uh, there has been ban on the import linked uh, product so now we have tied up with the local manufacturer and that volume will start from quarter 3 now this is related to farm equipment you said that's correct okay okay now i was referring to non auto engines which are used in infra and all so there uh, the drop is not related to rural right no there the drop is related to the pent up as i mentioned in the quarter 1 of last year there was complete lockdown so quarter 2 had a one time impact this year that is spread out between quarter 1 and quarter 2 and secondly on this uh, electric three wheeler side uh, uh, probably we are doing 1000 uh, units per month right now uh, so which uh, like sir which states you are seeing better traction and how do you see uh, this whole space or next say uh, two three years how do you see the volume ramping up in this electric segment and also you acquired this teja brand for that uh, l5 auto Uh, so, what is the plan over there? Uh, I mean, uh, say next one to three years period. Sure, Ashutosh, I'll reply on the first part of your question about the traction. So, it's the eastern and the northern states where we see the highest traction and the growth uh, in the West Bengal, UP, Bihar. So, that's the belt where e-rickshaws are uh, very popular, and we are seeing a good growth coming in from those states. Primarily, the segment is catering to the guys who were having earlier hand rickshaws or the The cycle rickshaws they are now moving up towards e rickshaws and they are able the person who was earning let's say 100 rupees a day now with e rickshaws is able to earn more than 300 400 rupees so that's the segment which is getting converted towards e rickshaws on the long term part and the volumes this is one of the segments which is having a highest penetration of e rickshaw i will uh, let nagesh talk about the vision and the strategy which we have towards e rickshaw as well as the l5 the teja that we have acquired now yeah. Uh, so let me start with the e-rickshaw. E-rickshaw yeah, itself, at the bottom of the pyramid, I think is a great success story. I mean, there is obviously the unorganized players and the organized players. Amongst the organized players, we one of the serious players in, uh, in the top uh, three or top four players, right? So and that the market share continues to grow, right? Uh, in the e-rickshaw market, and we are seeing the monthly trend go in terms of thousand plus units of sales. That's been talked about, right? when you look at the monthly average uh, from almost nothing now we have grown like uh, three four times right in terms of where the monthly average run rates are right the volumes also have grown right, in terms of uh, the roughly the 1000 plus units that i was talking about right where do we uh, uh, see the sales it's obviously in the north in the east and a very strong focus in terms of lives and livelihoods in fact right after Uh, covid 2 also we saw a lot of traction financing is a key part in this and i think with additional financing this segment will continue to blossom longer term to answer your other question we see this market transition between lead asset to also lithium ion model right uh, and some of the unorganized players moving uh, away and the organized players getting a lot more traction the expected cagr will be good uh, we believe the cagr uh, uh, in this segment because it's again uh, lives and livelihoods and at the end of the day uh, if you look at any of the analysis right uh, th- third party analysis uh, the e-rickshaw park continues to grow and uh, i think we are well positioned in this we saw this early just like the two wheeler we saw this trend early and we are i think in a good position to capture the growth there now coming to the teja or the three wheeler so this was part of our strategy right we started with two wheeler and then we moved to e rickshaw now the last piece was the e three wheeler which is really the mlr brand right and we're just getting started we just closed that a couple of days ago so i think as we look forward into q3 and q4 you're going to see a lot more action there in terms of um the e three wheeler uh, electric three wheeler as well as the traditional uh, three wheeler sales there as we go forward again their financing will play a key and building the dealer ships will be the key so some things that uh, i think greaves cotton has done well or greaves electric mobility has done well so we are quite uh, uh, confident when you look at both two wheeler plus three wheeler that this addresses pretty much with our platforms now being available on two wheeler e rickshaw e th- uh, on three wheeler for both b2b and b2c application it addresses a very wide market that's growing so will you use the same early network for this as well 
Teja vehicles? Uh, in, in no, the simple answer is no. They have their exclusive e-rickshaw network, which is very, very strong in the north and the east. Some of the Greaves care stores, well, through to synergies, are selling that. But clearly, Greaves uh, retail and MLR will have their own uh, network that we are leveraging the Greaves retail for. So that's where some of the other synergies will come. So, but the e-rickshaw and e-auto will probably be in two different channels. Okay. So, in summary, Greaves Electric Mobility will have the Ampere, which is the two-wheeler brand, e-rickshaw, which is the e-lee brand, and then the uh, e-auto will obviously be that the MLR brand. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amin Pirani from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Yes. Uh, hi, team. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my question was actually on the e three wheeler uh, side, and you know, pardon my ignorance if this has been asked before. Uh, you know, on the EV two wheeler side, we have seen this evolution from you know lead acid to mainly lithium ion, and also now from mainly low speed, you know, to an increasing share of high speed. Uh, uh, within three wheelers, again, you know, I think it started mainly as a as, as a lead acid thing, and you know, the e rickshaw is not really i think a comparable product to the auto rickshaw that we have it is the e auto if i am not mistaken so can you give us a sense of you know within the electric three wheeler industry what is the broad share between uh, lead acid and lithium and also what is the share between the really small slow speed e rickshaws and e autos and how is it trending so i mean uh, hi you are right in terms of the evolution so in three wheelers also the segment has started with the lead acid uh, technology and today in the e-rickshaw we have 95% share of lead acid vehicles okay. and that trend is changing more and more in, we are getting customers coming for lead, lithium ion batteries as we go forward so with the chain obviously there is a higher price difference between both and that price difference is almost 20 to 25% but we are seeing increasingly consumers are coming for the lithium ion batteries and that share will go up as we move forward Today in the two wheelers, as you know, it's almost 50-50 and even in uh, some cases 60-40, 60% in favor of lithium ion. So that journey will be taken in uh, e-rickshaw also. Also the auto is the right comparable or e-auto is the right comparable product and that is where our end to MLR. So with MLR, <coughs> we are going to have presence in the e-auto segment also. Uh, also. Today it's a niche segment in terms of penetration of electric vehicles is very small. I would say less than 5%, Nagesh in terms of e-auto. So that penetration will increase with the products coming in uh, from various OEMs and uh, MLR has the uh, early entry over there with the ARI certified products. So hopefully we will be able to make uh, increase the penetration out there with the lithium as the uh, lead acid battery products. Understood. And, and on the lithium and on the e-auto side, it is mostly the organized players who will be fighting it out, right? I mean, you are there. And I'm guessing, you know, we'll see entry from, say, the, the Bajajes and the TVSs. Whereas e-rickshaw will remain more of an unorganized uh, segment. Uh, uh, I mean, with you there, but mostly unorganized. So, I mean, there are few players in the organized sector right now. We are the second mm -hmm. largest and moving towards the uh, largest in the e-rickshaw organized segment. Okay. The segment was 90% dominated by unorganized three years back. Today, unorganized share has come down to 62 and 38% okay. is with the organized. As we okay. move forward, we are expecting the share of organized increasing. And within okay. that, uh, with LE, we are bringing in new products uh, with the better technologies to increase our share, uh, which is in single digit today. And if I can just add, in summary, uh, if you look at what we've done, right? We started with yeah. the electric yeah. two-wheeler about three plus years ago, right? Yeah. Before all the hype on electric two-wheelers started because we were convinced mm -hmm. that the shift was happening, disruption was happening, unit economics was going to get improved, right? <laughs> Similarly, the e-rickshaw trend started early. So the two-wheeler trend, we were there early. The e-rickshaw yeah. trend, we were there yeah. early and we also hope on the e-auto, e we are going to uh, right. So the idea is whether it is lead acid or lithium, whether it is the sub-segments, the high speed, low speed on the two-wheeler or the lead, lead acid versus lithium. Our teams have caught the trends early and I think that is helping us grow 
from almost a non-existing base or a very, very, very low base, right? And that's kind of how we see. And we are gaining valuable information in terms of customers, duty cycle, what works, what doesn't work. And uh, glad to report that our products are getting very good traction from the customers, both B2C and B2B. So I think that probably gives you a little more picture. Fair enough. That, that's very helpful. Thanks for that and all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Amit. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashwant Rajan from ULJK Financial Services. Please go ahead. Hello. I'm audible. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm uh, so sorry to interrupt. May I please request you to speak a bit louder? So audio is not clearly audible. Yeah, I'm audible now. This is better, so you can go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yes, I wanted to uh, get some clarity on the current tax of 4.12 CR. As we can see, a loss of 18.98 CR. Uh, can you shed some light on that? Sorry, I could not hear the question clearly. Uh, so I wanted to get some clarity on the current tax of 4.12 CR. As we can see, uh, we can see a loss of 1.98 CR on the so could you shed some light on the current tax aspect? So that's the advanced tax uh, because as you know, the advanced tax is paid basically for projected profit for the full year. So we have made the proportionate uh, advanced tax payment in June and September on the projected uh, uh, profit of the year, whereas the profit is going to be in the second half. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek from Sky Ridge Well. Please go ahead. Yes. Hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So, sir, my first question is regarding your higher other expenses. I know you spoke about this, but my line was not clear at the moment. So could you talk about it again, but led to the higher other expenses? I'm sorry, there was an echo on your uh, line at the last. We could not hear the question clearly. No, no. I was asking you if you could talk a little about your higher other expenses. I know you spoke about it earlier, but I had yeah. some trouble with my line at that time. So in the other expenses, there are two factors at consolidated level. One. There is a eight and a half crore of one-time uh, expense due to value adjustment of 26% uh, call option that we exercised for best way. Our wholly owned subsidiary Greece Electric Mobility exercised the option. So the difference between the originally uh, considered value versus what is paid now that has been routed through PNL. So that's eight and a half crore of one-time impact. The balance increase is due to the expansion of the people, marketing expense, and the infrastructure in e-mobility, which is geared for far higher revenue. And we are seeing quarter-on-quarter -quarter revenue growth, as is reported in quarter four to quarter two. So the people and the infrastructure is geared for much higher revenue, whereas cost is uh, getting incurred at the earlier, earlier stage. OK, thank you, sir. So my second question is regarding your standalone EBITDA margin. Sir, can we expect some improvement going forward and are you able to pass on your cost increases to the customers? Yes. So there are two factors uh, which will lead. One, overall revenue, as we know, if you look at the last year's trend also, the third and fourth quarters have a better revenue because of seasonal, uh, season part as well as we are seeing the post-COVID normalcy coming in and that will have natural expansion. The second part, some of the initiatives which are taken up by the company to restructure businesses, consolidate auto and non-auto, is going to lead to almost uh, 7 to 8% reduction in the fixed overheads. And that efficiency will kick in from the month of December onwards. So that's the second part which will help in expansion of uh, margin. And third is raw material cost, where the commodity price increases have impacted the RMC. Now, with the vendors, the price settlement happens on a quarterly basis, whereas with the customers, particularly in OEM, we have yearly price uh, settlement contracts. Some of those price settlement contracts have 1st of October and 1st of December as the restatement date. So these factors will help in margin improvement as we go in quarter three and quarter four. 
थैंक यू सर दैट वाज वेरी हेल्पफुल एंड सर माय लास्ट क्वेश्चन इज रिगार्डिंग योर ऑटो सेगमेंट सर आर वी सीइंग ऑटो कमिंग बैक बिकॉज आई नो वी हैड स्ट्रगल्ड विद ऑटो वॉल्यूम्स इन Q1 एंड Q2 so auto definitely we are seeing the traction so there were two factors one before the second wave of covid in the uh, the march and april we had seen the now business getting normalized so most of the oems had purchased and uh, built their inventory with the sudden lockdown that inventory remained in the dealer channel and at the oem end post the lockdown opened the first that inventory which was there in the channel that got liquidated and now oems have started demanding the uh, from the suppliers like us on the engines front so to that extent there is going to be recovery as we go forward and uh, though the demand will not come back to what it was at the pre covid level with the overall impact on the diesel but we expect volumes to come back at least to the last year's uh, levels as we go forward okay thank you sir all the best and one more part to company actually envisage it in 2017 and that is where it strategized to move towards e mobility also the the plant consolidation and business restructuring had started so though i spoke about quarter 4 additional reduction from the current levels but as you would have noticed in the quarter 2 and quarter uh, first half already almost 12% cost has got reduced compared to what it was in 2000 so that plant consolidation business restructuring at aggregate level we will have a 16 to 17% reduction compared to fy20's uh, cost level and that will completely come in the next financial years uh, pnl versus fy20 okay sir thank you sir that was helpful yeah just to add to that in addition to the efficiency on restructuring what the cfo covered keep in mind as part of this also he is the diversification strategy so one is the defense another one is offense that but talked about the defense which consolidation gave us a 16 plus percent right on the offense obviously auto engines we ex- expected diesel engine to go down we invested in cng and in electric then non auto engines was a diversification now with the greaves electric mobility and the greaves retail so i think that's kind of where three out of the four businesses right now are continuing to show growth and we hope uh, on the auto engine side things will pick up post the valley great sir. thank you very much thank you the next question is from the line of pramod amti from incred capital please go ahead yeah hi thanks for taking my question first is uh, just wanted to know uh, what is your current uh, local sourcing and what type of imports and what you import uh, wanted to know about that second is considering the fact that uh, there are some challenges in sourcing from china with the recent uh, shutdown so are you going to face any challenges in the short term for ramping up uh, to meet the demand on the production front yeah so first part of your question in terms of localization the initiatives that company took we are in compliance with the same guidelines for the high speed vehicles so almost all the product or uh, the supply chain is localized lithium cells which are not there in india as of now that continues to be imported and the uh, battery pack management sorry battery packs are done at the by the indian suppliers so that's to answer on your localization part where high speed vehicles are more or less now localized slow speed some component we continue to import the second part in terms of supply chain issues yes that's uh, something which is continuing we saw that in quarter 2 the demand was far higher than the volumes that we have reported it is the supply chain issues which impacted some of the production and uh, the demand could not be completely fulfilled we are working with various supply partners and uh, we are confident that volumes will be uh, able to increase from here on and quarter 3 and quarter 4 we are going to see a much higher volume compared to what we have seen in quarter 2 but at the same time supply chain related issues is one of the key monitorable in the immobility businesses uh, for us but uh, when you say the localization uh, even the same one says that about uh, tier 1 or tier 2 right but, but uh, there is a lot of uh, components which come at tier 3 level till other imports so when you look at overall as a system does it still have a large proportion bearing on the including cells the import content is that the fair understanding for high speed i would say that uh, other than license and there is no significant part which is uh, as part of the imported component most of it is already localized and uh, the other question is uh, uh, 
you guys have been playing an active role in doing a domestic M&A and also consolidating the industry. Uh, wanted to know, looking at the your product strategy for next five years, do you see a need to do any international acquisitions which can help you to strengthen your product portfolio or the sourcing strategies globally uh, to take it to a next level? It's difficult to answer, uh, though as you know, these are part and parcel of the expansion strategy that company continues to pursue. And uh, with the management and board's uh, consideration, we continue to look at all the options which are available. So company will do everything that is required in terms of its uh, technology superiority, acquiring the right know-how, but uh, difficult to comment. Right now, there is nothing which is at the, where I can talk about the specific target. Thanks, and all of this. The next question is from the line of Karthikeyan from Suyash Advisors. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I had a couple of questions, so bear with me. One is, can you talk about your uh, experience in terms of uh, fame subsidies collection and uh, what, what timelines are you looking at currently? Uh, another uh, question would be, can you also profile your current set of customers for the high-speed vehicle? You said uh, higher percentage is coming from two, tier two and three. Can you profile this customer? Sure. Let me take the first question about the subsidy. So it's a cycle which is now well settled, where as a process, once the secondary sale happens, dealer submits the documents, and within so it's the entire cycle of 60 to 90 days, within which the money comes to the manufacturer's account. So that's on the first part in terms of subsidy. Second part in terms of uh, the customer profile, as I mentioned, 70% is in the tier two, tier three towns. But at the same time, it is the millennial, and I would request Nagesh to add on to the consumer profile part. Yeah, so I think we've been quite fortunate that uh, we have two types of customers at the outset, B2B and B2C. B2B is our application-specific engineer products where we are providing vehicles to either rideshare carriers or cargo movers and stuff like that, right? On the B2C, we are seeing actually we had a very good day. Uh, last week we had 500 plus retails in a one single day, right? Our Magnus EX has been very well received, which is the extended range 100 plus that was launched uh, a week and a half ago, right? Uh, our Magnus has had a wait list at our dealers right now, right? And uh, uh, the typical customer is anywhere between uh, uh, the young millennials, the Gen Z on one hand, Right. On the other hand, we are also seeing office goers and people with family because our seats are wider, uh, range is good, reliability is good, and uh, we are seeing a lot of traction uh, in that sector as well. So all in all, I think our looks design is good. So we are seeing a lot of traction on both the B2C and B2B uh, as we speak. That's kind of at a high level. And then when you look at uh, website analytics, one in two user is below 34 years old. Uh, top five states contribute to almost 73% of our traffic. Uh, and uh, we are seeing some very, very interesting dynamics because a lot of first time buyers are coming in and buying this product. Uh, first time, I'm talking about first time to a two wheeler. So we are bringing in a new set of uh, audience to this, and that's what excites us, and the demand is far higher. And, and, and what is the price sensitivity of the customer in your assessment? Price sensitivity, keep in mind, over the years, and we have, I think this is very well demonstrated, our average ASP has gone up, right? Uh, from almost 40, 35, 40,000 rupees to now about uh, all, almost 66 plus thousand rupees, right? So, uh, and uh, and we also have a good range of products from the lower end, uh, slow speed to the higher end, right? And depending I'm on that, of course, sorry. the customer presentation is there. Sorry to interject. I was asking you specifically on the high speed vehicles. On the high speed, specifically with the subsidy and with the value addition, I think the actually our, our vehicles are slightly higher priced compared to the immediate. Uh, so it is, we believe we have the right value proposition and um, the demand far exceeding the supply is probably also an indication of where the pricing is there. And prices are expected to come down with the time, with the battery technologies changing uh, and it's coming in, the, in, in India. 
So Indian consumer, as you know, is a value conscious consumer. So our focus mm-hmm. will always to provide the product at the right price point, and that's the USP on which Ampere continues to work. The right. other thing is keep in mind Ampere or Reeves Electric Mobility plays in the heart of the market, the belly of the market, right? right. And right. Uh, uh, so while post fame to in general, the industry may have seen prices going down. Our sales have gone up. Our ASP has gone up, mm. right? Our value proposition has only improved. And uh, I think you'll see more of this as we go forward. That's right. Uh, one last question. Can kindly lend your perspective on this, uh, which is I have uh, heard a startup. I wouldn't say startup really. Somewhat uh, the company has made some progress. Retrofitting, uh, you know, e-rickshaws with uh, lithium-ion batteries. And these are, uh, you know, uh, uh, do you see that as a, a threat to the organized players? Because in a certain sense, the large population becomes a ready target to convert. Uh, your your current impression about this particular thing? Uh, I look at it slightly differently. Every This is an opportunity. The market size, when you look at two-wheeler, is about 20-something million pre-COVID. The uh, the market size for the three-wheeler is obviously a couple, another couple of million when you also add e rickshaw, right? Uh, when I look at it at any point of time, now this is where our fundamental business model helps. While Ampere is interested, or Greaves Electric Mobility is interested in growing the new vehicle sales, Greaves Retail, uh, which does servicing, multi-brand service, multi-brand spares, multi-brand retail, is also from time to time looking at retrofit also as an option because we are already talking. Uh, are we doing that today to a big extent? We are not because it's also a commercially uh, viable proposition. But that's something that we have been exploring for a while. And if the right opportunity and the right technology comes in, we see ourselves through our Greaves retail outlets, right, uh, mm-hmm. going after that. It again gets back to the right value proposition, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Is the right value proposition there for that customer to pay that X a thousand rupees or whatever it is? And will that, is there an ROI for that? That's why today the market is still struggling on that. In fact, we have been watching this segment very closely. And if it uh, takes off from a commercialization, you will see a participation on retail, Greaves retail. But I don't see, no, to answer your question, I don't see the market size is so big. Greaves electric mobility uh, demand should not be impacted with this. Sure. Thanks for answering my questions and uh, very good, Trisha. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vimal Goyal from Union Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, so sir, uh, uh, in, in the last conference call, you indicated that uh, uh, currently Coimbatore has the capacity for about uh, 5,000 units per month. And if I were to sort of uh, annualize, I mean, uh, if I were to look at the quarterly numbers, we have, and this is only for two wheelers, yeah? Uh, so. For the quarter, we have done about 10,000. So if I were to assume that, you know, you had the capacity, available capacity of 15,000 and you've operated at 10,000, so uh, would this purely be because of shortage or what could be the reason for, uh, you know, sort of so, uh, operating at slightly lower capacity utilization? Yeah, Vimal, you are right. It was primarily because of the uh, supply chain uh, issues where shortage of one part or the other impacted uh, the overall production. Yeah. Thanks, Dalpat. Yeah. Dalpat, uh, just following up on the previous question that I asked on uh, on the uh, on the breakup of uh, your revenues, I think uh, till the earlier quarter you used to also give out a segment which was others, which included the revenue from Genset, Agri Pumps, etc. Uh, so if you could just give me the breakup uh, in the first half of from engines and others, is that possible? I will uh, maybe talk to you on that because right now our three main pillars of the business, how we have restructured, is these engines, which includes all the uh, engines as well as the other equipment uh, associated with the engines. And Greaves Retail is mainly from aftermarket and uh, Greaves Care, Greaves Retail. Fair enough, fair enough. Thanks a lot. I'll come back to the queue. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jagannathan, individual investor. Please go ahead. Good afternoon. Uh, yeah, am I audible? Yeah. Yes, sir, you are. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Nagesh. Uh, uh, congrats on launching the Magnus EX. Uh, happens also to be the best price to features uh, scooter, uh, EV scooter. 
Uh, I just wanted to get a sense on the production capacity for the EX in particular and for other EV bikes. I mean, uh, both high speed as well as the uh, uh, the ones that you cater to on uh, lead acid. Uh, and when and when when do you think you're going to uh, fill the pending demand for EX as well as the Magnus Pro? As you mentioned, there's a huge pending demand. So I'd like to know when you fill the uh, pending demand and what is the backlog? Like, what is the uh, number that is likely that is required to be filled? Uh, the second part of the question is, uh, what is the total uh, production capacities for the e-rickshaws that you have? And uh, I, I guess I needed to get a sense on the total number of e-rickshaws that you produce. Uh, and the last question would be, uh, uh, with regard to what is the outlook for the engine business going forward and uh, margins for the next quarter. And with regard to the financial partner you were talking about uh, in an interview, uh, is, there any, uh, is there any thought process uh, in Greaves to get a financial partner or a technical partner for the EV business? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, first of all, for recognizing the Magnus EX. Yes, we are very excited with the response we're getting, right? Mm, in terms of, I'll take a couple of questions and then Dalpat will jump in as well. Uh, in terms of the technology, uh, sorry, in terms of the partner, I'm assuming, are you talking about the fundraise for the EV business? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, the fundraise, or if you need a technical partner to, you know, uh, to put a brand by your side uh, to sell even more. But I'm assuming that since you're selling whatever you produce, you don't need a partner right away. But yeah, uh, it could be a financial partner or a technology partner. Yeah, so I think, uh, like I've said uh, publicly, I think we are open. Mm, and if the right, uh, we believe we have an exciting uh, business case, an exciting model. If the right partner comes along and we, uh, it makes sense, yes, I think we'd be open is what I've said. Now coming to this, capacity is not an issue going back to what we were saying earlier, right? Between Coimbatore and now Rani Pet beginning to uh, uh, ramp up very quickly and we'll be ready by, uh, we are slightly ahead of schedule, we'll be ready by the end of the year, right? And uh, in addition to that, e rickshaw to answer your question, I think also has the capacity. My, our biggest challenge, like Alpat was alluding earlier, is the supply chain, right? We have actively pursued localization, we have local suppliers, we are working with them. We are working with tier two, tier three, tier four vendors to secure our quantities for not just for one quarter, but over the next four quarters. We are doing everything we can. So if supply chain is an, uh, not a constraint, I think we'll, we'll, the numbers should, case in point being, uh, last quarter was the best ever quarter for Reeves Electric Mobility. October seems to be the best ever month. Uh, until 25th, we have not even finished the month. Right, so capacity is not an issue. The commitment from the group is not an issue. Uh, are we in the right place between two-wheeler, e-rickshaw, three-wheeler? I think the answer is yes. Supply chain is the only thing I don't control, and we are working very, very hard on that. We have moved some of our best people from Greaves side also into Ampere to help us with supply chain, and uh, you will see the numbers uh, hopefully uh, improve as the supply chain improves. I think I've covered everything. Delpat, have I missed? Yeah, I've covered all the questions. Yeah, uh, but uh, what is the total pending demand? What is the outstanding demand for Magnus? Because see, when we go to the dealers and check with the dealers, the uh, the normal uh, statement is, uh, I mean, uh, we have uh, yet to deliver what we booked three months back. Or I mean, uh, there are different kinds of uh, uh, there's different kind of feedback. So. If there is a, or some people converting from Magnus to Magnus EX, Pro to Magnus EX, because they say, okay, anyway, Magnus EX is getting delivered, so we would probably uh, do Magnus EX rather than Magnus Pro. So, but the point I'm trying, uh, the question I'm trying to ask is, I got it. What is I, got, I got the question, uh, sir. I got the question. Yeah. So, uh, it's about roughly about eight weeks plus of demand. Uh, and we are obviously working as fast and as furious as we can to fulfill the demand. But the good thing is, we are delivering. We are working very hard every day. You can see the products on the ground. Our products have been around. It's proven, tested. Our products are delivering and exceeding people's expectations. Some of the product reviews I've seen, right? So, and I think we will uh, overcome this shortage as well. But it's a good problem to have. We are working very hard to meet the customer demand. Right, thank you. Uh, so because I've booked one for myself, so I thought, okay, uh, maybe oh, since you. I went to the deal, 
so since i went to the dealer and i was talking to him and so this is a, this is also a dealer feedback so yeah but uh, otherwise everybody seems to be happy thank you thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question i would now like to hand the conference over to mr nagesh pasavanhali for closing comments from oh, you sir uh thank you all for a very energetic and a very passionate discussion uh in summary uh as uh we announced i think our diversification effort our consolidation our restructuring efforts are paving way both in terms of the offense and the defense that i touched upon right um with four acquisitions done in the last four years i think it puts us in a 85% of the two wheeler three wheeler category in the greaves electric mobility our uh, greaves engines especially on the non auto side is showing definite increased traction our uh, greaves retail on the spares is uh, showing traction uh, in fact uh, when you look at the numbers you can see greaves retail as well as greaves non auto engines and greaves electric mobility all tracking to ahead of q3 of last year uh, or in that range uh obviously we we are watching where the uh, auto engines demand very carefully and we will see how the, how that evolves from a, a market standpoint but all the things within our control whether it is offense or defense i think uh, we remain committed to executing that thank you for your attention thank you for your time thank you happy diwali everybody uh, wish you all a very happy diwali thanks a lot thank you thank you on behalf of greece scott and limited we conclude We thank you all once again. Stay safe. Please, Please leave us alone. This investor call. Thank you for joining us.